Hey, how's it going? Keith Morgan for TechTyro.com, and today we're going to be doing a two-part tutorial on making tileable backgrounds for your graphic design projects and websites. So uh, we're going to start in Blender, and I know you might think, uh, why are we using Blender? Uh, this is the method I'm going to be teaching. We are going to start by making a very simple geometric hexagonal shape uh, that we will be using uh, for our main tile, and we will take that into Photoshop afterwards in part two and make a perfect tiling background. So, uh, to start, we're going to delete our default cube. We're going to hit Shift A and add a circle. And we're going to just take the vertices down to 6 so that we get a hexagon. And if we just hit 7 to go to top and 5 to go to, ice, to orthographic viewport, uh, we can see we got this really nice uh, hexagon. And if I just tab into edit mode, uh, we're just going to fill, or rather, we're just going to extrude and right click, and then that sets those vertices back to the same place they were, and we'll just scale it out. So we have this ring of faces, and then with this inside face, we'll hit uh, F to draw a face, and then if we just go to front or side view, we can hit G and then Z, and we can just pull that face up so we get this nice little slope. So it's got a little bit of dimension to it, as you can see, it's got some shading, which is what we want. That's the main reason why we're using Blender for this. You can get some really nice looking 3D, but very subtle uh, uh, tiling backgrounds, and they're really handy. So um, and just a tip, you can do this with squares and diamonds, um, and potentially pe uh, pentagons, but the math gets in the way if you go above hexagons. So uh, unless you want to start doing compound shapes where you use more than one kind of polygon, uh, for example, uh, octagons and squares, you're going to have some issues and you're only going to be able to uh, use, uh, you have to use more than one shape. Uh, so hexagons and lower, you can use the exact same shape uh, for every single tiling part, which is really nice. Um, so uh, we're just going to select this edge loop with Alt and right click, and we're just going to move it up just so we can level out that slope a little bit. And I'm just going to go to my side view just so I can see what I'm doing. And just a little bit there. And likewise, we'll grab uh, this edge loop and we'll move it up a little bit. And I just want that nice, more or less level straight line there before it dips down. And I might grab uh, this edge loop and just scale it out a little bit just so it gets a little more rounded. So I'll tab out Edamone and we can see what we did. You know, we got uh, we got some facets there we, we might not want. So what we can do is we can just turn on smooth shading and we get, you know, some nice smooth shading. So next what we can do is we can also skew the shape slightly. Um, you can use, you know, like slightly transform or transform shapes uh, so long as they're still primarily like shape that they are, like a hexagon. So for example, if we were to scale this on the X, you know, if we had tiles that shape, that would still work. Uh, so long as all the other tiles that we make in photo, or all the other duplicates of the shape that we eventually make in Photoshop in part two are the exact same shape still. Uh, and which they should be, as we're only going to be rendering out one tile of this out of Blender. So, you know, you only have to make a fuss about the lighting and the materials for one object. So it's quite fast once we get going. So. I'll hit 7 to go to top view, and I'll switch over to Cycles, and we're just going to use Cycles because it has really nice, really quick materials uh, that we can just slap on, and they look really good. Um, so I'm going to give our tile a glossy shader, and I'm going to switch the roughness value up to about 0.3. Uh, we'll leave the color at around a 0.8 value on all the RGB values, and then we will go to the World tab. We'll click Use Nodes, we'll change the color to an environment texture, then we'll go and navigate and we'll just go and find a random uh, environment map you might have in your computer. And what the roughness value on the, on the glossy material will make the reflections from the environment map not as extreme and slightly blurred. So you don't actually really know where we are on the tile. If we were just to orbit around so we get some reflections from these people per se, uh, you do not you don't see them as people, they're just they're just noise. Um, so that's what the roughness does, it just, you know, you could use the environment map, you can use any environment map just to get your lighting down and just put your roughness up and you won't have to worry about all this stuff showing up. 
uh, but we're going to leave that at around 0.3 and we're only going to we're going to go back to the world tab and we're only going to use this as our fill light uh, for the most part so we're going to drop that down to about a 0.4 and if we hit zz to come back to solid viewport shading we see we have this pesky point lamp up here so i'm just going to delete that and what cycles lets you do is there is a shader type known as emission and that will let you use mesh as a light source and it is a lot more easier to control your lighting when you're using planes to use your lighting or use as your lights so we'll add a plane and i'm just going to scale it up and i'll move it on the y-axis over a bit and i'm going to rotate it on the x by 90 degrees or so and yeah you know, i might just rotate it a little bit down just so we get a little more light and then i'm going to go to top uh top view and then i'm going to hit Control alt zero right above our tile and what that does is it centers the camera where we were looking um but right now we're using the camera's perspective and perspective doesn't really help us right now as it could potentially distort our shape and make it not very usable as a tile um what perspective viewport does is it mimics what our eyes do and what other lenses do is they create vanishing points and uh you'll have horizon lines and all that stuff but for now what we want is if we go to the camera settings we can change it to orthographic and what that is is a 2d representation of the scene so there is no vanishing point there is no perspective it is a 2d flat image of everything in that slice of plane you're looking through so that is what we want for our use and i'm going to go to the render tab or rather yes the render tab and I'm just going to change my resolution settings to, uh, you know, be about what we need for our tile. So we're just going to uh, crop our, you know, our dimensions of our rendering uh, to about the same aspect ratio of this. And then if we go back to our camera, we can choose uh, the or orthographic scale and we can just zoom right in. Uh, you know, you don't want to cut off your edges, so you just select your camera and you just make sure all of your... Uh, objects edges are in the frame as we will be needing those later and so we have that and let's just take a look at what our lighting is looking like so you know it's nothing major but we haven't given our plane over here our emission type yet so right now it's just it's just a object being lit by the scene just as the tile is so with that selected we'll go and choose a new material give it a emission type and you can see that we have this nice hot spot over here now and, uh, you know, you can play with the settings, you could give it a different color, yeah, make it red. Yeah. And then what we can do also is we can uh, Shift D to duplicate that layer, move it down on the Y axis. Um, and then we can rotate it on the X axis so that it points down on the layer just like this other one does. And you give it a different color if you want. Or rather, uh, click this two next to the material and then that separates because uh, currently these planes are sharing the same material, so if you edit one, it edits both. If you hit this two, it makes the object have the, the same material, but instead of being an instance of the same material, it makes a new copy of it, and then you can edit it separately. So let's go, just go and make it you know, blue or something. And eh, let's go back and make this one a little bit orange. Yeah, you don't need to make it too extreme, but you know, just enough to give it a nice effect. And what we can do after that is, um, probably go and render this out so uh, we're gonna go to our render tab and we're gonna switch our uh, rendering device to GPU uh, we're just gonna uh, let's see how big do we want our tile we can make it uh, you know 300 pixels wide by uh, 200 pixels high yeah that looks pretty good and you know we could just uh, go back to our camera zoom it in a little bit so we get a little bit more of what we want and then we'll go back to our render settings and we'll make sure we get 100% of our resolution uh, we'll choose RGBA so we have an alpha channel so we can we don't have to worry about all that stuff showing up uh, we'll put the compression to 100% under sampling we'll put our render passes to 150 uh, under light paths I uh, well, you can leave that for now that's not gonna be a problem um, for film, this is important. If you don't check the transparent box, if you don't check this transparent box, the environment map behind it will be in the render. So if we check that, you can see automatically that that becomes alpha. 
Um, and likewise, we'll go to our performance tab, and because we're using CPU, we'll just change our tile size to 256 pixels by 256 pixels. And we'll just give that a quick render, hit F12. And it's done in half a second. So that's pretty impressive. So we're just going to go and hit uh, image, uh, save as image, uh, make sure those settings are the same ones we want, uh, and just go and render it somewhere. Uh, we'll say right there, and we'll call it uh, tilebase.png, and save it out. So that completes the Blender portion of this tutorial. We will see you in part two over in Photoshop. Uh, for now, this is Keith Morgan for Tech Tyro signing off.